that to your face. We don't want your seed. Who did that? I'd like to say thank you everybody for coming out tonight. We're going to get us a word. I got a word from the Lord about, we're talking about transforming the power of discipleship. And God's in my heart about that because me and my wife are always trying to see how can we get the church to get <clears throat> the power back in the church to where it used to be. We're going to need power in these last days, you know, and discipleship is one of the things that's missing. I put on my uh, Facebook today, I put the question, I was a rhetorical just like Jesus did. I put a rhetorical question out there just to make people think, and it said, you know, are all Christians disciples? Are all Christians disciples? And if not, how you become one? Are all Christians disciples? See, that's rhetorical. All right? We know that Timothy was discipled by Paul. We know that Elijah, Elijah, has some discipleship stuff going on. Jesus did it 12, 70, 120, and more. Even John the Baptist, discipleship. But all Christians disciples. We will see. You know we're going to answer this in the Word of God. Because we believe in the Word of God. This is the Amplified Version. It reads like Matthew 16, 24 says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me, as my disciple that is, he must deny himself. Set aside selfish interests. Take up his cross. Expressing and willing to endure whatever may come. Ooh, and follow me, believing in me. Confirming to my example and live and living, and if need be suffering or perhaps dying, because the faith in me. Now, actually, again, all Christians, disciples. You know, when I told you it was easy for me after being 24 years in the military, I, I understand this 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 scripture right here because that's exactly what I did. I gave up myself. You know, I denied myself. You know, I set aside my selfish interests. I had to go where they told me to go, you know, my cross basically was the lifestyle I had to live, believing in me, believing in the system that is, I did that. So it was easy for me to understand that this is Jesus, and I'm going to keep going because it explained everything as I am, <clears throat> so I ain't got to do a whole bunch of talking tonight. All this is going to self-explain. What is the difference between a Christian and a disciple? <clears throat> the time disciple and Christian are related, but not synonymous. They're related, but not the same. The Greek term for disciple in the New Testament is methodist, which means more than just a student or learner. Mm -hmm. It's more than that, okay? A disciple is a follower, mm, follower, someone who adheres completely to the teachings of another, Hallelujah. making them his rule of life and conduct. Now, if you're like me, anybody like any old uh, Chinese martial arts movies? Yeah. I used to watch them a lot. What we used to say, they used to call grandmaster. These guys used to be sitting there grandmaster. I mean, whatever he said, they did it. All right. Well, that's what they was calling Jesus, Rabbi, King's Master Teacher. And he was doing that at an age of minor age when they actually had that in China and all this other stuff. But they had the stuff for that stuff going on with God. So that's what it means. John the Baptist had his crew. Jesus had his crew. All right. You know, and so all around the world, that's the way they think it was because it was called a school of thought. Uh, you, you go to school, they make you study those philosophers. They have their own school of thought, you know. <laughs> they have you studying all these guys. Um, and what is Jesus' school of thought? Uh, everybody has a school of thought. What, what was John the Baptist' school of thought? Anybody know? He was telling repentance from your sins and be baptized. That was his school of thought. What was Jesus? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's the only message you ever preached about the kingdom of God. All right? So that was his school of thought. So everybody, so whatever your school of thought was, that's what the people got behind. They say. Well, I'm a John the Baptist, and he taught me that, you know, forgive the sin. That's why when they, when they finally merged later on, he says, have you been taught the other side? You know, and they didn't like, no. You know, so they had to go and learn. That's why John the Baptist says, behold, you know, I have nothing else to teach you guys. You need to go up to this guy right here. He's going to teach you the next level. Just like she said, absolutely. The next level. So they school of thought. And that's what it is. When you follow somebody, you're following their school of thought. All right. Now, America's been run by the Greeks right now. Romans beat the Greeks and, and <coughs> stole their Greek stuff. And all American stuff right now, all our Greek philosophy is what America is built on right now. Uh, and all the stuff we got going on is coming from them. We got Roman structure. If you go to, to D.C., you'll see all the Roman buildings and pillars and stuff like that that come from Rome. But the philosophy or the thought comes from the Greeks. All right. So... What God is telling you here, he says, now you need to follow me. He said, if you're going to be my disciple, you're going to have to have my school of thought. 
Henceforth, that first scripture I showed you, God saying, my ways are not your ways. <laughs> you know, as far as the heaven and the earth, so are my ways. The watch this. What else does he see? What's the difference between a Christian and a disciple? A Christian is someone who has placed his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the most simplest thing you can have to be a kingdom citizen and the kingdom of God. You place your faith by the finished work that Jesus Christ did on the cross, and that makes you a Christian. All right? That didn't make you a disciple. Because you ain't followed nothing yet. You just believe. You placed all your faith in it. All right? A Christian has been born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. That makes you a Christian. I want you to be that. Makes you a citizen. You're a kingdom citizen. Now, what's the different disciple? Okay, now you're talking discipleship. Disciple, he has counted the cost and has totally committed, uh oh, totally committed his life to following Jesus. He accepts the call to sacrifice. Yeah, coming out on Wednesday service, a sacrifice. And Sunday, sacrifice. Giving the money, sacrifice. All this stuff. Follow wherever the Lord leads. The Christian disciple completely adheres to the teachings of Jesus. Makes Christ his number one priority. Uh-oh. Number one priority. And lives accordingly. He is actively involved in making other Christian disciples also. Not only is the saying, I'm dedicated. I'm going to make some more dedicated people just like me. See, it's a whole different level. And it's the difference between, do you not know um, United States uh, military soldiers are also American citizens? Y'all know that? What makes them different is that, what? They, they enlisted. <clears throat> and that's what Jesus did. He sit there looking at them guys. He says, <clears throat> after he came out of that grave, he says, now, all power in heaven or is mine. And he went into a draft. If any man want to follow me now, this is what I need from him. He drafted him. He said, come on. He wants to be enlist. Now, you know, only 2% of Americans join the military. 2%. Yes, 2%. And you would think about, oh, man, how come we're not hooking them up? <laughs> you know? It's only 2% of us up in America, but you ain't hooking us up. But, but that's the same thing God I told you. He said, broad is the way that leads instruction, narrow is the gate. See, when I was in the club, I had no problem getting guys. Hey, man, I'm going to go to the club. Like, call me. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Call somebody. You want to go? Yeah, I want to go. Switch it up. Hey, man, I'm going to Barker's Play tonight. Want to come with me? <laughs> Crickets, right? <laughs> see the difference? You, you see the difference? That's what we're dealing with. I had no, but when you, when you want to do wrong and bad and mischief and destroy your life, people are volunteering. Like, ah. Hey, man, I don't act right. I want to get my life right. I'm going to start treating my wife and be a better man for my wife and kids. Want to go buy stuff tonight? I have to destroy yourself, though. This is exactly what you're into. You won't find no, but you have plenty of people here to get mischief. That's why you see God come back and says, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the gate to life, you know, and says many find the broad way to destruction, but few find it the gate to life. Few. Few. You ain't gonna follow like that, hey, man. Get a group of guys. Come on. Let's go, man. Where y'all going? Man, we're going to Bible study. I love to see it in America. Now, you can find it in other countries. I hate, you know, I'm all American because America, when I do, because I do a lot of men's surveys, and um, when you come to find out, um, only in Christianity, the numbers are like 35 to 40% men. Only in Christianity. The one who got the truth. You know, Satan's busy. He got our men all bound up. We the only one got, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and we got 35 to 40% men in our churches. Now let's go to the cults. Come on. The cults, 95%, you know, Islamic men, yes. you know, Mormons, yes. 85%, all the wrong stuff. Yes. Like I said, broad is the way. When you're in the mischief, you can find plenty of people because your mischief stuff is going to destroy you. But when it comes to the right way, that's why I told you my first measurement is this. If everybody's doing it, I'm going the opposite way. That's my first indicator that that can't be a God. But he is never that popular. Never that popular. So be on the lookout, guys. Praise God. Here's the biggest difference right here. I'm going to show you right here is Christians know him as Savior. Disciples know him as Lord. That's the biggest difference. And that's why I'm in America trying to evangelize 
Americans. I don't have to go to a mission field. A lot of the first of all, I get the Christians to become believers, and then once they become believers, make Jesus Lord. Because they, they won't save you. That's the same level of the believing thief on the cross. He was Savior. Jesus was Savior to him. He was not Lord. Even though he called him Lord, he recognized you are Lord. But I need, never made you Lord of my life because I'm on the way out of here right now. They're not going to let me off this cross. Mm -hmm. But see, when you become a disciple, you make him Lord over your life. Just like I made the military Lord over my life. Wherever they told me to go, I had to go. I had no choice in the matter. People just going, you, what? What? You just got here. What you mean? You can't do it. I said, I got to go. There was lordship over my life. And it's real easy for me. That's why God called me to teach it in a no nonsense approach this way because I got it. I'm like, wow. Everybody, call, they like calling them saving. Who wants to go to hell? Save me. For what? Hell. Oh, no. Everybody wants that. Now you're talking about Lord. Lord means now he's going to tell you where to go and what to do, what to wear, what to say, what not to say. Nobody wants to do that. You're not giving because you have to give up your life. Watch this. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. This is Jesus talking. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now the reason why I'm giving you this is called me the word tonight, because... When, once Jesus... Now here, here's... This is 28. Now 16... It was so good about, we read Matthew 16 earlier, and Jesus is telling you he's recruiting, drafting. This is the funny thing. He's drafting you and talking about picking up your cross before he even went to the cross. He hadn't even been crucified yet. Now he has. Now he has. Now this is after he came out the ground. Now he's been crucified and came with all power. Before, he's prophesying over him. He's like, I ain't been to the cross yet, and I'm telling you, you're going to have to pick up yours. <laughs> you know? So here he is, he says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching to what? To what? Obey. To what? Obey. Oh, man, there's no law. You don't obey nothing. Everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of this age, uh, during that time. All right, so here we are, God says, Make disciples. Now, so the commandment is supposed to be that we eat the church. The body of believers is supposed to be making other disciples. We have spent a lot of years making new converts. The new convert is basically the same level as the believing thief on the cross. He believed in and had faith in Jesus Christ, you know, for eternity. Because that's where he went in instantly. After he believed in Jesus Christ, he went on to eternity. That's called a new convert. All we call, you know, a, a baby Christ. Yes. You know, that's, that's why I told you, yeah, my book Amen. stuck at the door. So most, most Christians are stuck at the door because they... It's at the level of the believing thief on the cross. They're never made because they're saving. That Jesus saved that guy. All right? But he never had the opportunity to make Jesus Lord. He recognized that he was Lord. He says, Lord, remember me when you get to your, uh, if you're paradise. Remember me when you get to your kingdom. He says, this day you shall be with me in paradise. So he recognized that he was Lord, but he never gave a chance to, to get under his lordship. We do. We need to get under his lordship, meaning now, God, what you going to do? Whatever the Lord tells me to do. Uh, when you start, when you get born again, you start as a babe in Christ. Don't forget that. This is where you need to measure yourself. Where am I now? Yeah. You might be an old person. I don't mean that is your spirit man is. You know, so you're a babe. <coughs> you got to go through the stages. Okay, well, adolescent, whatever. A toddler. Yeah, you go through all those. You go through all those stages. In the in the kingdom, nobody skips the process. That's right. You can speed the process up, but you don't skip the process. And how fast you get through the process is totally up to you. Yeah. You know, how far are you going to go with God? Deep in the Word. So, you don't skip the problem, but you, you can speed it up. But so, you, you go through those stages. And since me and my wife, we've been pastors for a while in different churches. We used to watch. And we'd see the baby. And then we'd see the toddler. And then when, when they start acting up, and then, okay. And you get the teenager. <laughs> and yeah, we just sit there. And you know how when you got a teenager in house, it's like, you, 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 you nerves. Same thing as a pastor. We have to sit there and just... You know, let, let them get that stuff out of them. You know, leave them alone. You know, <laughs> you, know you can't go and can't handle them too hard, you know, because they, right. they don't know what they're going through. They're freaking out. You know, what happens with the body of Christ? Okay? And pastors know it. We all pastor talk. We know. It's just like raising kids all over again because when you came down and got born again, you as a baby. You know? Yeah. And the baby needs to be constantly coming. We need to see you every Wednesday night. You need milk. 
Hallelujah. You need milk. You just keep sucking and sucking and sucking and sucking and sucking. You know, you can't be out there. You'll turn the baby loose. Amen. You know, they, they can get injured. Check you know, we try to check where you been. And say, that's when we put in for We call, hey, haven't seen you. Where you at? Amen. You know. And then you go to the stage. Once you know they missed that, you know, now they're just being rebellious. I have to treat them differently. And when you're rebellious, you start like an ass. I gotta kind of watch them with that. Okay, <laughs> you know, it's the same stuff, guys. And 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 we learn it from because God will do you the same way. He does you the same way. The way He raised you. That's what people are like. How you how you raise kids? That's how that's how make this thing complicated. You ain't the first human on the planet. You raise kids the same way God gonna raise you. He's gonna love you. He's gonna nurture you. And He's gonna discipline you. Repeat the process. I'm going to love him. I'm going to hurt you. And you're going to discipline. And you decide that you're better than God. Like, well, I ain't going to do my kid like that. And I, too, I seen two extremes. One decided, I'm not going to love him. A hot mess. I'm not going to discipline him. Another hot mess. <laughs> you know? The perfect one is in between. The balance between both. You love them and you discipline them. Because that's what God's going to do with you. He ain't going to let you off the hook. You at this? You say who the Lord loves? He what? Jason. Yeah, I know the word. So I gotta take it. <laughs> Praise God. The cause of the of sanctification. This with this with theologians called sanctification. You've been sanctified. Um, God. First thing you have to worry about is your position in Christ. The first thing He says, "I'm gonna seal you into the day of redemption." And that's what most people really care about. That's that, that's very shallow. Uh, that's a shallow belief of of, of 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 the Lord Jesus because all they care about is I just don't want to go to hell. All right. Their mind's not renewed enough to where you're saying, when we start talking about the other scripture, God says now, uh, the, the greatest command is for you to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your being, and all your might, all your strength. He says, I want all of that going towards me. Well, you don't know enough about God to do that. And as you get more in the Word, you fall more in love with God. And that's what we're moving. So Satan keeps you from getting more so you never fall in love with God. So when we start breaking out all the other stuff that God's going to command you to do, if you don't love him, guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to keep his commandments. Amen. You're going to find some type of fleshly way to get around it because you don't love him that much. You know? Uh, <laughs> that's one of the most hardened things. I mean, I told my wife I came home from a guy that I, that I felt like I had did everything for. I ain't call name, but I'm hooking them up and stuff like this. We're gonna take, and uh, and I told my, I said, I'm hooking this dude up, and I said it almost broke my heart when that dude looked me in my eye. I said, Hey man, you know if I ever did this and this, this and that, you uh, you uh, you'll do that for me, right? And he looked at me and he's like, No. I'm like, What? I'm thinking like, After all I had done for you, I hooked you. After all, he's like, No. I said, Why not? I don't love you like that. I'm like, Snap. <laughs> you know. And, then, and, and instantly when he said that, God says, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> now you feel me. <laughs> as soon as he told me that, it stuck like a knife. God said, uh-huh. Now you know, now you feel me. That's basically what you said. I don't love you like that. And he could have just said, after all, oh, <clears throat> now I feel him. You know, so that's how it happens, guys. You got to love the Lord with all your heart and soul, but you can't love somebody, somebody you don't know. And all you're going to know him is through his word. He has locked himself in this book. And he's not coming to help unless you come and dig him out. Those who search and dig. Ongoing deliverance from power of sin in the believer. It's ongoing deliverance from the power of sin. See, you've been saved from the penalty of sin instantly. And that's what most people get confused with. They always trying to figure out, well, does it mean I'm saved and not saved if I do this and do this and do this? See, they talk about the penalty. That's instant. The penalty of sin is death. <clears throat> If you accept Jesus Christ in your heart and he sealed you to David, yes, the penalty was, is death. God, Christ already died for you, and you have faith in him. That's all they care about. But I say that's the most superficial. Now, I say if you got a superficial mind like that, when all these other preachers and stuff, you start telling you about all the other blessings in here, that's not going to be for you. That's going to be for those who came out there. He says, now, if any man come after me, that'll pick me crawl. Yeah. Now you're going to go into the blessing side. On this side. If all you want is to die and go to heaven, you just to believe in thief on the cross. So, so when you hear people arguing about, man, they act like you gotta do something, you gotta do, you don't have to do anything to go to heaven but believe in Jesus Christ. But what about all those blessings they talking about? Oh, you need to come over here and crucify yourself daily and get and start doing some of this work, the process. That's totally separate. And a lot of people didn't preach it that way to me because I used to be so confused. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. And it seemed like both people was talking at the same time. They weren't incorrect. 
there's incomplete. It's always two sides of God. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. You know any covenant in the Bible always has two sides to it. Yep. It's always a covenant. That's why every time you see if in the Bible, me and my wife, back in the day we draw a Bible, we circle every if. And we say to the left is God and to the right is us. That's all it was. That's why he just told you. You've seen Jesus just told him again. He says, if you keep my, you know, if you continue in my word, that makes you my disciples indeed. If you continue. If you, what if I don't? I used to always do that. What if I don't do that? You need to go there too. That way you can count up the cost. Don't be playing around like you just, you know, rare somebody. Every time I say, you say, if you do this, this will happen. I'll say, okay, well, if I don't do that? You know? <laughs> I mean, you need to challenge yourself. But that will keep you from being deceived. Because you don't want to fall into self. self deception is the worst. You don't even know you're so far away from God. You don't know that you're not doing stuff because you're not checking yourself. But I have to check myself because I'm a bodybuilder like me and Troy. We, we used to be on the scale. We're on the scale. Man, how much are we? We're constantly measuring ourselves because we got shows to do. We have to be a certain way. So we used to measuring ourselves. You know, I was in the military for 24 years. You know they constantly measure me. Hey, man, your, your, your gig line's off. Yeah. That belt supposed to be lined up with that line. It's called the gig line. That's right. People constantly judge you, constantly make, don't judge me. People scared of judgment. It's called a measurement. I was rolling down in the base today and they had a little radar, a little thing showing how fast. It was judging me. I didn't get up to one day, stop judging me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how silly we are. Like, what, the, what are you talking about? You gotta have a measurement, yeah. <laughs> you know? I did not get up there and start screaming at him, you judging me. <laughs> you didn't get off yourself. You can judge every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how do you, how do you keep you from falling off a cliff? How do you know you're on the road? The guardrail says not. It's measuring you. Oh, you know, you know, you're going over the humps. So all this stuff, Satan came in and started just putting stupid stuff in our head and we falling for the okie doke. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. When we started saying, doing that series on my ways, my highways, when I started going through each thing, you're going to see so much stuff, you're like, what? I can't believe I fell for that. I'm like, absolutely. He, his number one job is deception because he knows you have so much power and you can do damage to his kingdom if you ever realize who you are and how to operate in God's system. God's system will take him out and he knows it. He don't want you to do that. He ready for you to just be religious and most because you know religion cannot take out another kingdom. He has a kingdom of darkness. Now look at Luke. Here's Jesus talking again. Luke 14, 25, and 30 says, let's get the word. It says, one day when a large group of people were walking along with him, this is Jesus, Jesus turned and told them, <laughs> anyone comes to me but refuses to let go father, mother, spouse, children, brother, sister, yes, even one's own self, can't be my disciple. The question, are all Christians disciples? As you can see, mm -mm. Anyone who wants to shoulder his own cross and follow behind me can't be my disciple. If you want to show good, you got to get your own cross. Yep. Oh no, my brother, you got to get your own. <laughs> you got to get your own cross. Verse 28 to 30 says, Is there anyone here who, he's talking about, you're going to use an example now, planning to build a new house, doesn't first down, sit down and figure out the cost so you would know if you can complete it? If you only get the foundation laid and then run out of money, huh. you're going to look pretty foolish, aren't you? This is Jesus talking. You know, everyone passing by will poke fun at you. He started something he could not finish. See? We have to learn. See, this is how practical. See, if, if I was raised in church back in the day, and people just started quoting Jesus in a practical way, it had a lot of more men's attention because we got logic and reason. That's the first thing to jump off on us before we get real spiritual. Logic and reason will kick off on us real quick. And that's that you can't get no more logical than that. Alright? That statement. Here's Jesus talking to men, telling them, hey guys, you know, uh, here's here's the deal. Let me in, in case you miss what I just said, here's an example. Alright? Uh, you have to count up the cost because you, you before you go off and start doing stuff. The cost of discipleship. Now I'm going to give you some principles, the characteristics of discipleship. <coughs> These should help you out. <clears throat> you must be replicable. Replicable. Tough word. Yeah. Get three syllables. Replicable, replicable, replicable. In other words, you must be worried of somebody who wants to redu duplicate themselves after you. We don't want, we don't need more bank robbers, home mongers, you know. Thieves, God says you must first be worthy of being 
replicable. Because when you make somebody a disciple, that means somebody's going to mimic your life. When we want more of you right now, about five of you. Uh, we need about five of you, but we want five. What, let me ask you this for those who work. Would your boss want five of you? Oh, yeah. mm, come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, they wanted a hundred of me when I was just go. Because I was a good, hard worker. All right? Um, but yeah, you have to be, that's the first thing discipleship. Second one, you must be made. You got to be made a disciple. You can't do it on your own. You have to be made, as the Jesus, the scripture said, you know, uh, go throughout the world making disciples. Not laying your hands and you accept Jesus, you're a disciple. No, you got to be made. He did not do that to them. He, they worked with him for what, three, uh, three years? And then three and a half years? They were walking with him because they were being made. All right? Jesus commanded us. <clears throat> He commanded us to make them. Uh, that's what that means. Okay. He commanded us. It's a commandment. And the reason why I put that on there, hold on, back. He commanded it because what we've been doing is making converts. We have because converts increase our numbers. But a new convert, all they can do is suck resources. They can't really go out there and reproduce themselves. You know, don't get me wrong. They can go and witness and, and stuff like that and put their level. But each seed produces up its own kind. All right, so God says, make a disciple, and then that disciple turn around and make another disciple, and then that disciple turn around and make another disciple. But if you make a convert, you say, okay, that convert is going to make another convert, and they're going to turn around and make another convert. You know, now we got enough people with power in the church to actually power, have the power of the church. Now we got more numbers and no power. And that's the state of the church today. We got plenty of numbers, but no power because we don't have disciples. They have to be made. It's a commandment. So that's not the priority for me to make disciples, not just get people saved. Uh, you must departure. Big one, big one, big one. This one right here with most people, you're going to have to leave some friends, some family members to go to the next level. They'll love you as being a saved person. They'll love you as a new convert. As soon as you say you're going to try to be a disciple, I don't think, I just don't take it, take all that. <laughs> all right? You know, that's the same stuff you tell me why they wouldn't join the military. I said, man, why you don't like the military? Man, I just don't like nobody telling me what to do. I just tell them, don't get saved. That's the first thing they're going to tell you. If you're led of the Spirit, they're going to tell you what to do. Where to go, what to do, what not to do. Shut your mouth, be quiet, say something, speak up. You know, and like, what do you mean? So what you have is you are god plex of yourself. <clears throat> you must depart. The first thing you told uh, Abraham, get thee from among thy people. Got to go, got to go. When you got Joseph, had a dream. His people rebuked him. He left. Had to go to grow. You're going to have to go to grow. Now, I'm not saying not loving them like that. You're not leaving completely. I'm just saying you ain't going to be able to spend the majority of your time on when you go to the next level. Because then they're, gonna, they're either going to get with you or they're going to start rebuking you. And they're going to talk you off your, your throne. I'm telling you, when I even think about something as simple, simple as this. I mean, me and Troy, when we started, we were skinny little kids working out in the gym. All right? And, uh, and when we decided to go to the next level, how many people did we have to leave for that? Because they won't, they won't go with you. You can't take them. Any type of level, you want to go financial level, education level, you have to leave some people. You can't stay with them. You'll see them, <laughs> you know, high, nothing against you, not judging you, but you're going to have to leave them if you say, I want to grow. You can't take them with you. It's hard to get a group degree on something. All right? That's positive. Like I said, I get a whole bunch of guys to do a club. Oh, yeah, really? I'll go with you. But anything to go up to the next level? They ain't going to do it because it was called sacrifice, more time, more treasure, and this is what discipleship is all about. Next one, must be, you must be a life student. Unlike college, this is a life commitment that God has. He says, yo, you're going to join my military, you're going to be my disciple, it's going to be for a lifetime. I got you. You're going to be my soldier. It's a lifetime commitment. Number six, drafting process of the kingdom. This is how God does. He makes disciples. This is the draft because each seed produces up its own kind. You learn it in Genesis in the beginning, before there was any type of fall, that, that you know, each seed gonna produce up its own kind. So, drafting process for the kingdom is, go ye, that's why he says, he says, go and give me, try to save as many people you can and bring in the kingdom. 
He says, no, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. He went right for the journey. Because we know a disciple is a powerful unit. Uh, do you have a question? Oh, no. Uh, so, because a convert, a new convert, a babe in Christ, they really can't really uh, do anything because they don't know God well enough or love God enough to operate on that level. And But we need some disciples. And that's what they did. That's how they changed the whole world. When he was on the Roman road. What happens when you, uh, to you as you bear your cross? I can personally tell you this. When you get ready to become a disciple and really go all in for God, it can be embarrassing. Because <clears throat> God wants to get you. The discipleship process is about getting rid of you. That's what that cross is for. That cross is time to get rid of you. You got to go. It's, it's not about you. When you came, you probably had all this stuff. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You're still in control. That's the problem. So when you're on the cross, you, you don't have no control. So it's embarrassing. I mean, it, it's going to be some embarrassing moments. If, don't you think it's embarrassing for Jesus to sit there butt naked on the cross? That was embarrassing. Oh, I know they put a lawn cloth on him, but in the Roman, they didn't. It was all about embarrassing. They did it on purpose. He was naked. That's why the women was far away. They said, and the women were at a distance. Why? Because he was naked. You know? So that's embarrassing. All right? Uh, oh, here's a good one. God kills you in public. <laughs> I know we like to get along. God, if you're going to do something to me, just don't let everybody else see me because I'm cool. I'm the man. Everybody go to, no, no, he's going to kill you right in public. Because he wants everybody used to roll with to see that you've been changed. Yeah. <laughs> I know I've been changed. We're going to see because he's going to put you in some predicaments to where it's going to be so mad. And, 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 he, and man, I used to have my roll dogs around me. And it's just like high school all over here, big grown man. Oh, you going to take that man? Absolutely, I am. Because I'm dead. I'm dead now. You know, God going to kill you in public because he wants all the people to see that you've been changed. I remember the first time I went back home to one of my friends, and he was like, and we ran in this situation, and I can tell you, he had a girl roll up on me, <laughs> you know, and uh, he seen me, he goes, and I said, I said, hey, she, oh man, this girl talking about you, I was like, oh, what's your name? I'll say, oh, my name's blah, 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 get out, and, and he goes, uh, <laughs> and she said, well, oh, she, man, she digging you like that, I said, man, I don't care about that, man, I'm married, I had a ring on everything, I'm married, you know, I don't care about that, and he looked at me and says, man, that's not the man I used to know. I'm like, hallelujah! 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 Yes! Thank you, Lord! I've been confirmed to have a testimony. The devil confirmed me. We know who you are. Yeah, he showed me the man. He was just like, just puzzled. I can't believe you. I'm like, I believe it. <laughs> Your reputation. You ain't got one. Uh, let's go to come to America on this one. I love, I tell my wife, you know, basically when, when, when that, that girl, the queen, she had been prepared for the king, and Eddie Murphy went and asked her, what do you like? She's like, whatever you like. <laughs> whatever you like. Well, that's the way you're supposed to be with our king. You don't have a reputation no more. Your reputation is whatever the king is. And whatever he says goes, you're going to go with that. Yeah. And your next thing gonna change is definitely this: your value system has to change. Because you're gonna see all these moral values at the kingdom. Like, oh, we kings, we don't, we don't act like that. We don't conduct ourselves like that. You know, oh, where I'm from, you know, the kingdom of heaven, uh, we don't do that. We don't partake of that. We don't do that. <coughs> see, you now have a different value system. Where you get it from? Oh, I got it from God. My value system is from God. Oh, I used to have my own made up crazy one. Well, man, I think sometimes, you know, man got to do what he got to do. You know, stupid stuff. <laughs> you know, because uh, you had no training. Right. You know, but now, <laughs> I got a different value system that a man ain't got to do what God do. A man got to do what God says. Amen. That's my system now. You got a new value system. And then, oh, oh, this is funny. Everything I'm telling you, I got so much passion because all of this happened to me. All of it. You know, pierce your life decision. Pierce your life directions. Just like it pierced Jesus in the side. Pierce your life direction. This is like Saul when he's on the road to the masses. When you think you got it all together, you go in one direction, and God shines up and knocks you off your high horse. 
I got my degrees, I got my career, I'm the man. And God knocked you off your high horse just like he did Saul. He's pierced your directions. The life that I thought, well, I'm going to do because I've never seen this. <laughs> you know, I had plans, ambitions, places I wanted to go, people I need to meet. But I'm here tonight on Wednesday night because he pierced my life directions. All right? And that can happen to you. You're going to be open to that. Now, this is not a bad thing, man, because you're dealing with God. God said, I know the plans that I have for you. So it's not a negative thing. Yeah. I'm just saying, be open to when you say, oh, you know what, I really want to go all the way for God. And it don't look nothing the way that you always in your own self was. You need to get ready for that. And that's fine. Because he's going to have the best plan anyway. Right. Especially when he's going to doors and get reward for when you get to heaven. Hallelujah. That's the main thing. I want to go up here. I did, my, I did it my way. You get nothing when you get up there. I want his way if I can get a reward. <clears throat> Your future, absolutely same thing. Your future, the one that you think you know you want to have. That's why you see these people when they start, you can tell when they've been on the conveyor belt of, of the crucified cross. Their attitude change. They start saying stuff like, you know, well, I'm just going to do whatever the Lord says. And this is a person who used to be always having an idea, ready to go, and then you see this big change. All of a sudden you're like, you know, man, I'm just going to... Where would the Lord take me, man? That's where I'm going to go. I'm just saying, hey, you pray here. You let me know you hear everything, too. See, that's somebody who's been broken. That person who's sticking their chest out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You ain't broken yet. Mm -hmm. Amen. you still in charge. Yep. you still in charge. That's a dangerous spot to be. No, you don't want to do your own thing. Say love people like that. They love people. I got to go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to I can't tell you that, <laughs> you know. You better humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, you know. He says, humble yourself. He tell you to do it. He says, you better, I'm not going to humble you. You better humble yourself. Why? Yeah, not because he's going to do something because Satan is looking for the guy who's not walking in church. That's what he's looking for. That's why God says, humble yourself for I can even come in and take him out. See, and God will fight my enemies for me. Once I give it to him, once I make that thing my enemy, God will come and fight him for me. But you got to make that thing your enemy. You can't say, I just got this problem. That's what's wrong. You got a problem. You need to make it your enemy. Mm. And then go out and fight it. Yeah. It's not your problem. You go, I am this problem. No. Make it your enemy and go out and fight it for you. You got to despise it. I can't stand not being able to control da 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 da. God, I hate when I always find myself doing da 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 da. Could you help get this out of me? And when you make it your enemy, you say, no, it can fight. I'll fight it. But as long as you nurture it and baby it and saying, it's yours, it's yours, it's going to be yours. It's going to be yours. You want to get rid of that thing, man? Make it your enemy. I despise. I hate that I think that way. Why can't oh, I said I wasn't going to do that no more? Help me, Jesus. Help me. Yeah. I don't want to be like that. Cry out and spare a night. Oh, Find yeah. yourself a closet and say, God, I'm not leaving you until I get a breakthrough. You have to do some of that stuff, guys. Yes. I had to do all that. Oh, yes. I had to get rid of myself. I had to pick up a cross and crucify. He's got to go. He's got to go. He's messing up. He's messing up. <laughs> that was me. I was messing up everywhere I went. Oh, <clears throat> you got to crucify that thing. Hallelujah. Soon as you see any of that old man rising up, he's like, ah, oh, cross time. Cross training. You know, time to pick it up. Because you need to get, and my wife, me and my wife, we joke all the time. We know some people who says, man, I'm really sick of this. I said, oh, that's cool. And that's what said, I'm really tired of this. He said, oh, that's cool, cool, cool. But when you get sick and tired, that's the perfect storm. Then you just want to do something. Because some, you get sick of something, man, you be really hot and mad, and you be a little desire, a little motivated to do something for a minute, and it'll die off. Yep. And you'd be really sick of this happening to me again. And every time I look around, it's out. And you get fired up. And then, uh, but the perfect storm. Uh, you yeah, God, God make it sick and tired. Uh, <laughs> you know, the perfect storm, you get sick and tired of it? Man, uh -uh, I'm done. Yeah. See, in, in, in the Christian world here in America, we bail people out too quick. Because they don't know the law of seed time and hard time is, is justified. And whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But if you go and try to bail them out, even though they're going through it, since you lighten the load, they go into it again. Talk to me. They go right into it again. You're supposed to have spiritual discernment to realize, and that's why I always ask a lot of questions. Because people come tell you through, you would believe that I'm going through this, and I'm going through this, and I'm going through this. 
And I started letting this back just like, rip, 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 rip. I go right back to the city. <laughs> and I'm gonna find the root. That's right. You know, because I'm like, oh, because I want to make sure, like, I don't want you to be in no pain. God don't want you in no pain. I don't That's want you in right. pain either. That's but right. I don't want to see you back in this. So I need to find out what was the root of this because a seed has been sown. Either you sowed it or somebody sowed it in you. You know, and now the fruit is here. And you're talking about the fruit. You know, and that's what's wrong with our government right now. All they deal with is fruit. They never go to the root of nothing. And it's wasting resources of time. And you've been doing the same thing. Oh, so-and-so need me. So-and-so need me. They need another check. You don't be doing that all the time. Because you ain't got to the root. I say, have you noticed that God don't deal, deal with you like that? Have you ever said, but God, where you at? Because he's not like you. God wants you, when you go through something, it's like, how did that feel? I want to feel so bad that you never get into the gate because I don't want you ever doing this again. It's impeding your assignment. It's zapping your power. It's taking away from your future. Got you all off. So that's why you always going to bail us out. You know, we think like God says, he says, I'm not mocked. Whatever a man sowed, that, that only he's going to read. You're forgiving. See, that's the, the reason. You're forgiving. I'm not going to say in the hell because you did it. But the consequences showed up. Yep. I've been charging on my charge card. You in debt? See time? Harvest. Yeah. You know, not a problem. Meeting. And it take you a day to get charged on the things, and it'll take you a day to get out. You know you can do it. Wave a wand. Be ya. Get uh, start the car all over again. Zero balance. Not gonna happen. Cause you didn't learn that. God's a master teacher. Rabbi means what? Master teacher, <laughs> you know. So I told you guys, I deal with you in the same way you raise your kids and deal with people the same way God deals with you. It's all in the book. God gonna treat you that way. That's how I treat up here. It's fair. It's just. It's loving. It's kind. It's wise. That's the way you deal with people. And that's the way you raise your kids. You know, the same way God's gonna deal with you. 